So the other week I made a video about Walmart's new line of overpowered gaming desktop PCs. And I was basically just trying to speculate and infer as much about these builds as possible with relatively little information. Just looking at the online product pages, the, the incomplete spec lists and so forth. But today we actually have the real deal here in our studio. I purchased the $1,400 PC that I was looking at online in the first video and brought it here so that we could take a closer look at these gaming rigs from Walmart and figure out what they're really made of. I don't know what to expect really. It's still sealed in the box. Like, I just hope I didn't waste $1,400 on one video. The Thermaltake A500 aluminum TG mid tower features a sleek aluminum front panel and two four millimeter tempered glass panels for breathtaking views. Enjoy 420 and 360 rad support at the front and top respectively and breeze through installation with a dismantleable modular design. Step up your case game with the A500 aluminum TG and click on the link below for more info. All right, let's do it. Let's gut this sucker. I have to wait, hold on. Are there any? Okay, you can't see my shipping address, right? Why am I asking you that? Now you're definitely gonna be looking for it if you weren't already. I'm pretty sure we're fine. I purposely, oh, that's that's an address that I almost showed you guys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I purposely didn't unbox it before filming. I wanted to get this on camera because some of you guys might be curious how exactly this all works from a big company when ordering a gaming PC from a big company like Walmart. Let's see here. So far, it's pretty standard to most big system integrator experiences. All right, cool. So we've got sort of a, okay, that's that's clean looking. And then you, on the other side, it's giving me a water cool vibe here. Hopefully that means the temperatures are good. I'm gonna tilt it down so you can see. This is the first thing I see when I open the box. Oh, oh hey, this is interesting. It's a quick start guide. This is actually not very special. I'm just not used to unboxing pre-built. And for the record, I should have said this already, but this is the DTW1. This is their lowest end gaming desktop, which is still a hefty 1400 bucks. But for that $1,400, you get a Core i7 8700, six core CPU, and a GTX 1070 from NVIDIA. We don't know who the add-in board partner is. I speculated that it was Gigabyte. You guys should definitely watch the part one video if you haven't yet, because then you could see how correct or incorrect I was at all of my predictions. Hey, look look at this foam. I like this. I like the foam packaging. It's very heavy duty. Seems like it was well taken care of in shipping. There's virtually zero damage on the actual uh, outside box as well. Well, all right, what's what's in here? We've got, oh, hey, look at this, RGB. We get an RGB strip in there or some sort of RGB element with instructions, LED light controller. Look at that, very interesting. Okay, I wasn't expecting like an actual RGB remote in here uh, with an AC cord, of course. All right, here we go, guys. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> All right, sorry. Get excited when I undress new toys. Okay, you guys can see it better than I can right now. What does it look like here? Hey, it looks looks pretty good. Yeah, you know, you got, okay. So you got tempered glass, tempered glass confirmed on the front and left side panel. There's none on the back. There's just a regular, regular steel side panel on the, on the other side, which I would prefer anyway. And on the top here, there's three USB 2.0 ports. At least they look like 2.0 ports because they're all black. There's no blue ones. You get a power and reset at the top, mic and headphone jacks, and that's all for the front panel. Panel. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I would have liked to see USB 3. We'll, we'll test the speeds just in case, or we'll, we'll actually check the wired connections to see if one of those might be USB 3, but doesn't look likely. And we've got uh, some overpowered branding on the front there and on the side. The side uh, is 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 large, large branding on the side, but it's it's tasteful. It actually isn't. It's not like a terrible looking logo or anything. Taking a closer look at this front panel here, it's fully tempered glass. You get three included 120 millimeter fans at the front, and there's a very thin sort of ventilation area going around the three edges, the bottom, the right side, and the top. The left side is completely closed off because the tempered glass side panel here sort of extends past the actual frame and it meets the front panel. So there's no gap there, but there's a thin, a very thin gap along these three edges. So it kind of looks like the front panel's floating a little bit, but I'm a little concerned that this gap is way too narrow to let a lot of healthy airflow in. Those, those front fans are gonna be choked for sure. Of course, I'm not gonna validate this until a future video where I actually do proper testing. Once the dust settles from Thanksgiving, rest assured there will be a follow-up testing video. Oh, and side note, I just realized that there's zero dust filtration at the front whatsoever, so prepare to clean this thing often. All right, let's take the tempered glass side panel off. It's a very odd position to remove a side panel from. I'm sorry, PC, you should not have dropped the soap. All right, actually, before I take the side panel off, I'm gonna change the camera angles because now that we're done with the unboxing, we don't need these wide shots anymore. So let me tighten it up for you. All right, that's better. Okay, you guys ready to see it? Me too, let's do it. 
Whoa, hey -oh. Interesting, interesting. Okay, all right, so before we dive into the specifics here, let me quickly go over the full spec list. Like I said, Core i7-8700, so you get a six core desktop CPU. We have a GTX 1070, which is confirmed from Gigabyte, more on that in a sec. There's 16 gigs of DDR4 memory at 2444 speed, according to the spec sheet, which is also kind of peculiar. And we have a 256 gig SSD with a two terabyte mechanical hard drive. Let's take a closer look at this build though. I wanna start with the cable management because that's the most glaringly obvious thing that's standing out to me right now. Uh, so, okay, we've got we've got USB 3.0 here. In the first video, I thought this might have been custom sleeved extensions. Clearly I was wrong, and later on I, I realized that, yeah, it probably isn't that. Interestingly, they have it just routed right over the video card. Proper cable routing would say to put this behind the motherboard tray to avoid this kind of treachery. Also, quick side note, now that we're in here, I can confirm that the USB ports to the front panel are 2.0, none of which are 3.0 because I can see that there's a 2.0 header right here, and the only USB 3 connector on the motherboard is going to the rear expansion card. I thought this was a PCIe card in the first video, but it's clearly just a USB 3 adapter, and it allows for a Type-C USB 3.0 connection. At first, I thought that was USB 3.1, maybe even Gen 2, but it seemed to just be USB 3. Also, oh, Okay, single, what is that? A single four pin power plug for, for our graphics card, which is not even plugged in all the way. I swear to you, watch, watch, I'm gonna take single finger, you know, you know there's a retention clip, right? So it's supposed to stay on there. One finger, disconnected. Definitely wasn't even clipped. This would not boot right out of the box. I don't know if that happened in shipping or if whoever was building this just failed to unplug. It has to be the builder because there's no way once it's clipped in, it's not going to come out in shipping. Maybe, maybe it could. If you guys have any experience with that, let us know. But that's, that's I guess, a strike. Whatever. We're not, we're not keeping score here. But that is a little concerning that the graphics card power was not even plugged in. So, um, yeah. Is the CPU plugged in? Yes, okay, good. By the way, the CPU is only using a four pin. I, sh I should say the motherboard only has a four pin connector for your 12 volt EPS uh, for the CPU. There is an additional four pin connector coming off your power supply, but your motherboard only supports four pin, which is fine because you're not overclocking this. You can't overclock the 8700 anyway, so uh, that's all fine there. The rest of this cable management though is, is, is kind of sloppy. It's kind of sloppy for sure. The 24 pin cable's fine, not much you can do there, but the two SATA cables are really loose. They could have been taut, a lot more taut, and they're zip tied to the cable, the power cable for the video card, which is just kind of bizarre. And then this thing's just kind of hanging off. That could have been cinched down a bit. Uh, the zip ties aren't even like fully tightened. Like this kind of looks like a rush job to me. Now granted, this is a very simple system, so it's not very difficult to go in and rearrange the cables, redo the cable management yourself. But again, if you're new to PC building, which you might be if you're considering buying a pre-built system from Walmart, then you aren't going to really want to deal with that. You're not going to want to crack the side panel open in the first place. So it's just a little disappointing, I would think, uh, for most people to, to see this system brand new and, and the cables just kind of all over the place. Then again, a lot of people might not even notice. They, they wouldn't even know good from bad cable management. They just might think this is what a gaming PC looks like. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. The layout of this case is pretty straightforward. There is a power supply shroud, which is sweet. There is a rubber grommet in the shroud as well, which they did not use. They could have easily used that for the, uh, the video card cable again. And then you have this sort of interesting like grid pattern on the front of the power supply shroud that gives you a view of your mechanical drive, maybe for additional airflow or something like that, breathability. I think it's funny that the case actually has the, the lettering HDD 3.5 inch just kind of stamped into the side. Why isn't there any printing right here that says motherboard? Just seems racist. Now the CPU cooler, as I predicted in the first video, is not an Intel stock cooler, which is good. At the very least, it's not that, but it is still a fairly entry level, kind of dinky looking cooler. It's a small heatsink tower there with a 92 millimeter fan, it looks like. I really get the sense that Walmart just tried to get the absolute cheapest aftermarket cooler they could find that would prevent the CPU from overheating, but would save them the most coin. And again, we'll verify all this stuff in a follow-up video. I also wonder how loud that fan is. Hmm. Now this is a mid tower chassis, so it can support full-size ATX boards, but the board in here is actually micro ATX. To be exact, it's a Gigabyte H310M S2. So it's using the H310 chipset from Intel, which is totally fine. You don't need an overclocking chipset with an 8700 anyway, but it's micro ATX. It seems like it's only got one full-size by 16 PCIe slot, which again is probably fine for most people buying this system. One thing that concerns me with this board though is that it is a thin profile micro ATX board. So it's not quite as wide as most 
MATX boards on the market. So there's only two DIMM slots on there. That's also because Walmart's cheap and they're cutting corners wherever they can. So there's only two DIMM slots on this micro ATX board and you only have one stick of DDR4 memory that's populating it. So you're running single channel, which optimally you wanna be running dual channel when you can. The only way to do that in this case would be to buy another one of these sticks. This is an A-Data, 16 gigabytes of A-Data DDR4 2400 speed. 2400 makes a lot more sense than the 2444 that was listed on their website. So. Good to know, single channel memory. Good job, Walmart. And obviously only having two DIMM slots does limit how much you can expand your memory in the future. Although since you already have a single 16 gigabyte stick, if you pop another 16 gig stick in there, I mean, 32 gigs is more than enough for the majority of gamers. 16 gigs is enough for, for, for most gamers these days. Taking a look at the video card here. It is a Gigabyte GTX 1070 WinForce OC 8 gigabyte card, which is exactly the model that I speculated it was in the first video. It's a cheap card. It's one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest GTX 1070 from Gigabyte that you can currently find on the market, but that doesn't mean it's a bad card. It's very basic, it has a very cheap plastic shroud, there's no backplate obviously, zero frills, but it's still a GTX 1070 at the, end, at the end of the day, and thank God it's not a blower style fan or cooler, it's got a, a twin fan design with a heat sink. For all intents and purposes, it looks pretty solid. Apart from the 8700, I would say this is the next strongest part, if not the strongest part in the entire system. So, uh, that's good. It's just a matter of how cool it can stay with this relatively basic cooler, especially with those uh, front fans being more or less choked for airflow. That pretty much covers it for this side of the system, so why don't I turn it around and we'll take a look at the back side. Ooh. You know, technically we only got halfway through the cable management scene because there's more over here. Everyone say a prayer. Here it is, I haven't seen this yet. Boom. Hey, that's actually not bad. That is a lot better than I was expecting. This actually looks a lot better than the other side, which usually doesn't happen. You know, they, they made good use of, of tie down points. It's not like they really used or abused that power supply shroud much either. They could have just stashed a lot more junk down there, but it looks relatively empty. And most of the cabling has been done properly behind the motherboard tray. I like the generous CPU cooler cutout too. Very nice. Now I can't remember, I might've said that that RGB remote that we saw earlier was actually for an RGB strip. I was wrong, it's actually for the fan. The fans are RGB, this is an RGB control hub, and we can see that the three fans in the front and the rear fan are connected to it. So in total you get four RGB fans, all 120 millimeters, and we'll test that out in just a bit. But little module there, right next to that you have two trays for two and a half inch drives held in place by single thumb screws. It's actually a pretty common and appreciated design. I like that design. But their SSD has been mounted down here. I'm actually gonna unplug the cable so I can take it out and show y'all. They mounted it down here in the drive cage. Might as well unplug the, oh wait, actually, sorry. This is the mechanical drive up, up top. So we get a Toshiba, two terabyte, you know, is your basic 7,200 RPM mechanical hard drive. That's fine. And then you get an ADATA ISSS316. Looks like it's using 3D TLC NAND. I don't know if you can buy this or if this is just uh, something for system integrators, but it is a 256 gig SATA Rev3, six gigabit per second SSD. No idea how, if it's any good. ADATA is a pretty reputable brand though. If it was just some random no-name Chinese knockoff name that I didn't recognize, I'd be a little concerned. Now I saved the potentially worst part about this build for last, and that's the power supply. Because as I mentioned in the first video, it's pretty well known among enthusiasts that system integrators will often skimp like crazy on their power supply, just put a dirt cheap unit in there in order to make a good portion of their margins. And unsuspecting buyers will be gaining on their systems six months to a year to two years down the line after their purchase, and then pop, boom, bam, or whatever the sound a frying power supply makes will be heard. And it could potentially damage more than just the actual unit. It could harm the rest of your system too, because it's all connected to the PSU. So I actually want to take it out. I'm going to uninstall it really quick because I can't really see what brand it is because of the PSU shroud. So give me a sec. All right, let's get this guy out of here. What do we got? What is this? Great Wall? What the hell is Great Wall? I've never heard of that. Probably some Chinese company or something. 500 watts. It's 500 watts for an 8700 and a GTX 1070. I mean, it boils down to just the reliability of the components that are inside and the efficiency rating. And it looks like, it does say 80 plus, there's no badge. There's not even like a basic 80 plus badge anywhere. It's probably too cheap of a unit to even afford a badge, but it does say 80 plus in small text here. So I guess it does have some small amount of decent efficiency, but that's only one part of what makes a good power supply. Just because it has 80 plus on there doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything really. We still have to find out exactly what components are being used inside and just how, how haphazardly 
made this unit was. So again, guys, this is exactly what I expected from a system integrated pre-built uh, is, is a really, really weak power supply. Now this system as a whole, I guess, you know what, let's, let's, let's wrap this up really quick. Give me a sec, I'll turn it around. All right, you know what we haven't done yet? We haven't turned the system on just to make sure that it works. So, all right, it, it powers on, okay? You've got, you've got LED colors, right? No, oh wait, I gotta, I gotta pull the tab out. <laughs> Noob. All right, there it is. Okay, cool. You can do fun things. Mode changes color. Ah, cool. Hey, addressable RGB. Look at that. Not bad. Okay, so what's the deal with this thing? Now, I, I'm not going to give a full review and say this is a review because it's not. I haven't even tested the actual system. We still don't know what the CPU temperatures are like, if this cooler is any good, what the GPU temperatures are like, if you're getting any intake from those front fans. But what we can say is that there are certain hardware shortcomings here, right? You, you don't get USB 3.0 on the front panel. You're limited to single channel memory out of the box. Your graphics card might not even be plugged in when you get the system because somebody else built it. And you have, quite frankly, the type of power supply that literally keeps me up at night. That's not to say that there aren't any good things about this system. It's cheap for what you're getting. For a Core i7 hexa-core CPU like the 8700, which just hauls ass in games, and the GTX 1070, you also only have one warranty to deal with should anything go wrong with this system. If you build your own rig, you've got eight, nine, 10 maybe, different warranties, different vendors that you have to contact should any part fail. But with this, you just go to Walmart. If the fan breaks, if the CPU Fs up, whatever, it doesn't matter. You just go to one person and that's a lot easier for a lot of people. The last pro I can think of off the top of my head, which isn't really a pro to me because I enjoy this, is you don't have to build the system yourself. If you just don't have the time or the knowledge or the know-how, you don't wanna bother with it, you just want a PC to game on and that's fine. Not everyone needs to love all the things that I love, although the world would be a better place if they did. So I'll close with this. If you're dead set on buying a pre-built gaming PC, two things. One, explore other options. There are more system integrators out there who have been doing this longer than Walmart has. In fact, they've only been doing this for like a week or two. Not all pre-builts are built the same. So go check the competition out and see what they have to offer. And two, consider building it yourself. It's really easy, I promise. You can watch my step-by-step -step guide, which I'll link somewhere around here, maybe in the description. And if it's a time thing, then make time for it. You know, blow the kids off. Who cares about the wife? They don't matter. You know, when it's just you tinkering with your hardware, that's what it's really all about. You know, and there's a, there's a whole community of people who do this. So if you need help on how to handle your parts properly, I mean, I, you just ask me. I do it all the time. So guys, thank you so much for, for tuning into this video. Let me know what you think of these Walmart PCs in the comments. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Till next time, guys, have a good one. I'll see y'all in the next video.